Thirteen Things. We have one song in our catalog to have a little more pop in the Billboard Hot 100. That being the 1975 track, Shining Star. Morning. today so if you're still working on your tiles that's fine i just ask that you cover them up uh, when we're talking about this project um you don't have any notes today how rare is that it's If anybody else has their dollar for firing the tiles, I can take that at any time. If you forgot, you can bring it tomorrow. That's fine too. Coldplay single opens with the lyrics. Look at the stars. That's correct. Jessica, you were on the board at one point. We hit the right button now. Okay. <laughs> Number two, the film's Home of the Brave, excuse me, the film's Home of the Brave and Twilight's Last Gleaming both get their names from the lyrics of what patriotic song? The Dark Fatal Banner. That is correct. Jessica, you got two points. Yeah, what are you nervous about? Yeah, you're doing great. Right. Well, she should be nervous about it. <laughs> Good morning, good morning. All right, wrap those tiles up for now. You will have work time to work on them um, before you start the new project in class today. Uh, I just want to make sure everybody's getting all the information on the new project. So, uh, first off, just another quick little overview for the week because things. Um, I think I've probably shifted and changed a little bit. So today um, I'm introducing the plate project and I'm going to show you how to make the plate. For those of you who are in person, um, I'm also going to show you how you could make the plate on the wheel. So if anybody wants to try the wheel today, um, you would be able to do that if you're here in person. But first I'm going to demonstrate the hand building way of making the plate, which is what the people who are at have to do. So um, so you'll kind of, people who are here, you'll kind of have a choice. Um, so that's happening. Uh, tomorrow, uh, you, you will be um, hand making some tools to be able to add a design to this plate. And tomorrow, I'm going to show you how to make those tools. And then again, you'll have work time. Um, Thursday, you're going to have to add a foot to this plate, and I'll show you different ways to do that. And then work time. Um, and then Friday, we will, I'm guessing, probably have a Google Meet because I think that there's not so many people in class that are um, doing the science MTA. So. Those of us who are not doing the science MCA will meet for Google Meet on Friday. All right. Um, so uh, this project um, will be made in a mold. So we're creating a plate, and it can be like a small little dessert plate. It can be a large dinner plate. It can be um, a chips and salsa plate that has a little mold in the center of it that you put your salsa in and the chips are around it. Um, there, it can be a sushi plate that has maybe a little container for your soy sauce and then your sushi goes next to it. So there's a lot of different ways and types of plates that you could make for this assignment. Um, but the way I'm going to show you to make your plate, you will need a mold, which means you're going to be pressing your clay to make your plate inside a pre-existing plate. So people who are at home uh, are going to be using a uh, blue hexagonal paper plate that I've included in your swag bag. Um, people who are here, you also have the option of using that blue hexagonal plate. Actually, there's one right here. So you could make a plate that is the same shape and size. People who are at home, this is what you're going to be using, this plate of this shape and size. And I have a ton of these. So if anyone in class wants to use these too, you can. But also, for those of you who are here in person, I have a bunch of more traditional plates that you could use. You could press your clay into this and make a plate that's that size and has that kind of frilly lip. 
I also have really weird plates like this. So you can lay your clay in that and make a leaf shaped plate. There's all sorts of different plates that I have there. And so you really are gonna have um, some flexibility to be able to use whatever kind of shape plate you want. People who are at home, you certainly can use a plate that you have at your house other than the one I've provided you. Just make sure you ask first before you use that other plate, just in case it's like grandma's fine china, so you don't wanna use that. Um, all right, so that's kind of like a little bit of foreshadowing of how we're gonna do this. Um, a plate, we all know what a plate is. We eat off of them every day. Um, but if we were to break it down and give it an actual definition, a plate is a shallow, usually circular vessel. So a vessel remembers something that holds something. So a plate is meant to hold food uh, from which food is eaten or served. And uh, one of the things that's uh, really important to remember about a plate, which obviously we know, but sometimes we don't think about it because it's so obvious. A plate has a rim that's raised up higher than the inside. That's so if you put sauce on your plate or peas on your plate, they just don't roll right off the edge. So the plate that you create, whether it's on the wheel or whether it's made in a mold, it does need to have what's called a sauce rim. So this little raised edge around there is a sauce rim. And check your plates at home tonight, you will see that they have sauce rims. And so that's gonna be a really key important part of this plate project. Um, this is a rather quick project, but one of the things that could go horribly wrong with it is if you work with the clay and uh, you, if it's too soft, when you take it out of the mold, um, that sauce rim will just flatten out and you'll have a flat slab and that's not a plate. So that's one of the things that, that can go wrong if you're moving your clay around and out of that mold while the clay is still too plastic, too soft and floppy. Um, I'm suddenly paranoid that I didn't log on to the Google Meet. So sorry, I'm gonna pause things for a second because I didn't hear anybody log on to the Google Meet. Uh, oh, there are people here. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> All right, resuming, sorry. All right, so um, for this project, see, let's present. For this project, uh, you're going to be creating a ceramic plate by using a pre-existing plate as a mold, or maybe some of you will be doing this on the wheel. That's a completely different technique to do. The lid must be higher than the center of the plate, and there must be a subtle foot on the bottom along with initials and hour number. You're going to be stamping a design on this plate. So that is going to be the required design on this plate. And there's lots of different ways that you could have that design, and I'll kind of go into that more in coming days. Uh, but one of the things to consider is, is your design going to be symmetrical or asymmetrical? Can somebody tell me what does it mean if the design is symmetrical? Yes, what does it say again? Same on, same on all sides, exactly. So you could do a design that's totally the same on all sides. And so then uh, what would asymmetrical mean? If it's, um, if symmetrical is the same on all sides, what's asymmetrical? Yeah, different on, on different sides. So you can have a really busy design on this side and then a slightly less busy design on that side. I'm going to show you lots of examples of that in the next few slides. Um, another option is you can have a design everywhere on your plate, like covering every square inch of it, if you wish, if you really enjoy this process of stamping, which actually can be really meditative and very satisfying. Um, or maybe you're going to have a design just in the center of your plate. That would be okay. Or maybe you're just going to have a design around that sauce rim of your plate and have it just be on the edge. So there's lots of different ways that you can approach adding a design to your work. And the way that we're going to be making our designs is based on the work of this Irish artist, Mari Stone. So this is a time lapse of her creating not really a plate, it's more of a tile. But it's still a good example of what we might be doing for our project. <laughs> So she basically is taking different objects, pencils, toothpicks, um, popsicle sticks, and she's stamping them into the clay to create a symmetrical clay. So you're going to be creating your own stamping tools to be able to do this technique. 
Um, starting tomorrow, you're going to be taking popsicle sticks. People at home, you're going to be doing the same thing. And you're going to be cutting and sanding the ends of popsicle sticks to create different sorts of patterns that would be stamped into the clay. So I'm going to talk more about her and her design work tomorrow. I just wanted to give you a little forecast of what we're going to do. So um, let's talk about uh, plate shapes and plate designs a little bit just to get some ideas flowing. Um, so these are hexagon shapes similar to the blue paper plate hexagon that people at home have and that you guys could use as well. Um, one thing to note is you can actually cut into the lip shape if you wanted the lip to be something other than exactly what the mold has given you. Um, so this is a hexagon where they just took a little nip out of every little point of the hexagon. Um, and then there's an example of a hexagon where they um, didn't alter the shape really, uh, but it has a nice symmetrical design. Uh, and it's not stamped, it's not exactly the technique we're going to be doing, um, but it is a good example of a symmetrical design. So um, these are two symmetrical designs. This would be a good example of how you could just maybe have a design just in the center of your plate, and that's fine. You can use a ruler to find the exact center and let your designs radiate out from that central point. Um, or you can just have a design that's around the lip. A lot of your plates that you might eat off of at home, probably if they have a design, it's either probably right in the center or it's around that sauce rim. That's kind of the traditional place for a plate design. So that's an option. When it comes to you adding a design to your plate, you could do it just in the center, or you could do it just around the rim. Um, these are examples of asymmetrical designs, which have a really different feel to them. So here you see the cherry blossoms are, are really balanced on one side, and there's not really a design on the other side to counterbalance it. So what I think the artist has done here is they figured that the food is going to go on the other side. So once there's food on that plate, the food counterbalances the design. So when you think about it like that, it kind of makes sense. Um, on the other one with the blue flowers, they did counterbalance it a little bit. There's a strong design on the left and then a little design on the right. So that's the thing uh, to think about as well. If you want to be a little bit more artsy um, and play around with your asymmetrical balance a little bit, that's a, a fun thing to do as well. Um, another option is to simply have an all over design where you kind of start in one spot and then kind of fill in all the rest of the spaces, uh, maybe with a little bit less of a game plan than you would if you were measuring and finding these things. Um, and so you could do an all over design like you see uh, these two plates, where it kind of becomes a pattern that just repeats, um, not necessarily evenly across the whole surface. Um, again, here's a great example of how you could cut or add to the plate to be able to make it have, take on a different shape than just a standard circle to make it a little bit more creative, a little bit more interesting. Um, some of the plates that I have here in, in class are, are really more of a tray than a plate. So if you want that um, kind of non-traditional plate shape, um, these are sushi plates and they have a little soy sauce thing and a little um, chopstick holder. And so that is um, you know, a perfectly great example of a plate. Um, and I, I've written this here simply because once you know this process, it's a pretty quick process, and you could use the same plate that you use for your, or the same mold that you use for your first plate to make a second one, if you wanted to make a set. Um, and there's always, you know, usually a couple kids that maybe want to make one for each member of their family, and, and that would be great. So if you want to make more than just the one, that would be extra credit for the, the additional plates that you would make. And the additional plates would not have to be due at the same time as the one I'm grading. They could be turned in later. All right, so um, these are your steps for today. This is what I'm gonna demo now. So I'm gonna lock this up on the screen and I'm gonna call you guys over around table six, please. Um, let's see, Shia on your way over, could you turn on the lights for us? I'm gonna stop sharing. Keep recording. Thank you. All right, everybody who's over there, come over here. Camera on. And... All right, come on, come on, get over here. Okay, so um, for the people who are at home, um, and less so for the people who are here, because you guys kind of have access to unlimited clay. So um, the, the amount that I want the kids at home to grab is about a softball of clay. Right, if you're here, working here, um, and especially if you're gonna do maybe a bigger plate like this, um, you're probably gonna need more clay. And so uh, I talked to you guys who are here about um, steps that you're gonna follow 
um, once we're off the Google Meet. Um, but for people who are at home, you want about a, a, a soft ball of clay, wedge it up on your wedging spot, and then you're gonna make a slab of clay. And shoot. So remember to make your slab. Start by pre-flattening it and then throw it diagonally. Um, hey Thomas, can I ask for your help? Behind you, there's a cool whip container on that shelf that has toothpicks in it. Would you bring me a toothpick, please? Yes. So I'm just always leading with a different edge so that my clay stretches. Gracias, senor. Um, so my clay stretches really evenly. So actually, that softball of clay was kind of more than I needed because look, look at this big slab and it has to fit into this small plate. So it's really more clay than I needed. So what's smaller than a softball? Uh, orange? Baseball? I don't know. Baseball might be too small. So it's getting a little bit awkward for me to pick up this large slab and to throw it diagonally. Um, another thing that people at home can do, I do have that rolling pin that I provided for you. Um, I'm going to get rid of some of this extra clay right now because it's honestly just way more than I need. And it's, gonna, it's, it's hard to tell if my slab is even or not when it's that big. Okay, and when I look at it now, I don't know if you can see this at home or people who are here, my slab is thicker on this side than it is on that side. So I need to throw the side that's thicker away from me to stretch it out a little bit. Now, one way that you can tell for sure, and this is, it's going to be really important with this project, that your slab is consistent. Because I'm going to see um, the, the slab consistency in the rim. It's going to be really obvious if one side is thicker than the other. So I'm going to be very picky about slab consistency. And so people who are at home, one way you can check, other than just looking at the cross section to see if it's the same here as it is here, you can take your needle, not your needle tool, your, your um, toothpick, stab it through, mark with your fingernails where the top of the slab is, and pull it out. And so that is the thickness over here. And if I mar match it, is this the same thickness here? Um, it's a little thinner on this side here. So I'm going to stretch it one more time. Okay, so now let me do a quick double check. This, this, this is still a little thinner over here, but I'm going to probably just throw it one more time and then be good. Okay, so I have my slab made. It's consistent. People at home, you're probably going to spend a little bit more time doing it than I just did. I just wanted to, to be as quick as I could. Um, now, this is for um, everybody who's here as well as the people who are at home. If you're using this technique where you're using a pre-existing plate and you're tracing it basically to make your, your slab fit perfectly into that shape, no matter what that shape is, you're going to put that plate upside down on your slab and you're going to trace it. So the slab is going to become the same shape as your plate. Now, this is really, really important. This is a refinement issue that I'm going to um, really expect you to do a good job on because you're ceramics B. When you're cutting the shape out, whether you're using a toothpick or a needle tool, make sure you're holding that toothpick straight up and down. If you get um, lazy or if you kind of are, are, are going at different angles, like if you start cutting with the angle like that or start cutting with the angle like that, your edge is going to be weird. All right, it's, it's gonna have a weird angle to it. So it's really important that you keep that cutting tool, whatever that cutting tool is, perfectly straight up and down. That is going to give you the best possible lip on your pot. And believe me, I'm gonna be paying really close attention to the lips of your pots, um, of your plates when you turn them in. Okay, so extra clay people at home, wedge that together so it becomes workable clay again for another project and then bag it up right away. All right, so now I have my slab of clay. Um, what I've learned in the many times that I've taught this this year is if you just put this um, piece of clay inside the paper plate, um, number one, the paper plate will start to absorb the moisture out of the clay and the paper will, will warp. And then your plate becomes a weird warped shape. Um, and what I also learned is that um, it's really hard to get the plate out uh, if you just put it directly into your mold. So one of the things you're need, gonna need to get is some extra plastic, and you're gonna just cut a plastic bag, or you could also use um, saran wrap or cling wrap if you're at home and you have that at home. Otherwise, just cut up a plastic bag, and you're gonna put that as a barrier between the clay and your mold. 
And that's going to be the case whether you're doing a big plate, a weird plate, or a paper plate. You got to do this no matter what kind of plate you're doing. So then I'm going to line them up right here. Ideally, my slab should be on a tray right now. It's not. Um, do I have a tray handy? I do not. Oh, wow. If I had a tray, my life would be really simple because I could just slide my hand under that tray, keep my hand on the plate, and go whoop like that. But I don't have a plate or a tray. So I'm going to just have to use my fingers and make it go whoop, whoop. All right. So there we go. I just was making sure that it was lined up uh, with the, the proper edges. Now I just have a damp sponge, just a little cup full of water. There's some wrinkles in my slab here, and so I'm going to use my sponge to not only smooth away those wrinkles, but I'm also using my sponge to make the clay take on the shape of my plate. And since it's a paper plate, I kind of have to be careful of not pushing too hard because I don't want to flatten out my paper plate. So I'm just kind of using my middle finger and pressing in to, to make the clay go into that sauce lip so that I get that nice raised area. And then I'm going to put a little bit more firm pressure at the bottom where I had all those little cracks. And I'm going to smooth up the, the lip as much as I can. I know that the plastic might get in my way. And so you'll be able to do more lip smoothing once it's out of the mold. Um, but today your task should be to get it inside the mold, smooth it so there's no wrinkles, get it to really conform. Um, so people at home, can you see now how it's um, really conformed to that shape? So no matter what kind of mold you're using, that would be your first step for just and then you would snap a picture of that. And because this is so saturated uh, with water right now, we really need this to get leather hard for tomorrow. So um, the piece of plastic that you cut up, I'm just going to use the remainder of it to kind of lightly drape over it so some air can get to it. It's not wrapped up as tight as we normally would. And I would pack it away like that till tomorrow. Tomorrow, hopefully, uh, we'll be able to start adding our stamped design to the inside of the plate. Okay. Uh, all right, so people who are here in person, I have um, two little additional things that I want to share with you before you get working. So people who are at home today, I am not going to have you guys stick around today. You can um, sign off uh, for today. If you have a question, you can type it in the chat and I'll get back to you later. Um, and that's it for you guys today. I'll take attendance off of the, uh, the print off on Google Meet, okay? So people at home, you can sign off. People who are here, I'm gonna have you guys gather around the um, slab roller. Um, I know a lot of you use the slab roller already for your tile project, but I just wanna kind of review the steps on how to use the slab roller so everybody hears them so that you can use them at your leisure. So come on over around the slab roller. Stop recording. Hey, Coyote.